Hey Yogi, welcome to class. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Re. This is Drakey. There is another Bassett knocking around here somewhere today, but she um, she keeps moving, so she may make an appearance, she may not. And if you return into the channel, uh, welcome back. We're stoked to have you back. Um, before we jump into class, my usual little speech. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do. It just helps uh, me and Drakey to grow uh, in this massive universe of YouTube. Uh, all of that out of the way. So today is a bit of a hands-free flow. So we probably will use the hand slightly, but more um, helping us get up and down, but we won't be putting any weight on the hands, no weight bearing, no vinyasas, uh, using the hands or the wrists. Um, just because I often get asked for more of these whenever I put one on the channel. So um, I'm just, yeah, following through on what was asked when the last one came out. Um, so if you've got a block, grab it, it will be handy. Uh, pop it near the top of your mat. Um, and we'll come to start standing. So <clears throat> make your way to the top of your mat. Have your feet roughly underneath your hips and kind of have them on the inside of your hips. So not necessarily would help if I faced you for this. So this is roughly my natural hip stance, um, but people often think that they have a much wider hip stance than they do. So have the, the feet, you know, kind of directly underneath your hip joints. And then before we do anything, just lift all 10 toes up from the mat and then feel how your um, inner arches and then um, what my, my teacher refers to as the baby arches all start to lift. And then as you lower your toes, try and keep those arches nice and engaged. Yeah, draw up through the front of the legs. So lifting your kneecaps by just gently engaging the front and the back of your legs. And then turn your palms to face forward. Coming into our mountain pose, Tadasana. And from here, you know, I'd invite you to close the eyes. If you're not going to close them, that's cool. Just keep the gaze really inward. So um, try not to have like a really focused drishti, which we will need at some point. But for now, try and bring your your gaze into your inner world rather than your outer world, if that, if that made some sense. So closing the eyes or keeping them soft, draw your shoulder, shoulders up towards your ears and then send them back slightly and then just lower them down. We'll do that a couple more times. So draw the shoulders up, send them back, send them down. Nice. And now just come to a nice, sort of neutral position, standing tall, and just arrive. Bring yourself into the present moment. It's so difficult. We all, I think, struggle with this at different times, but just bringing yourself into the here and now. Feel free to leave behind whatever happened before you hit play and try to keep at bay whatever you know you will be doing when you finish. Notice if your body is just gently swaying. I like to think of it as our natural vibration, our inner vibe, the natural beat that we move to when we're just stood here vibrating. Engage Ujjayi breath. Gently close the back of the throat on your inhale through the nose. And gently, strongly exhale out back through the nose. Inhaling. And exhale. Tune into that very gentle Darth Vader wave like sound. Inhale. And exhale. One more just like that. Inhale. 
really test how much you can take on board here so really fill the lungs really fill the belly take that breath almost so it could go down into your pinky toes right at the bottom underneath you and then strong exhale visualize that breath coming back up from the toes and leaving you through the mouth Blink your eyes open or refocus your gaze if you were keeping it soft. And we'll begin. On the inhale, reach your arms up and overhead. Your drishti is to the fingers. On the exhale, the hands come down through the center line. Samastiti here. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Reach as high up through the fingertips as you can. Exhale, bring the palms down strongly to you. Inhale, reach the arms up. On the exhale, open to the right. So your left hand is going to chase to the top of your mat. Your right hand is chasing to the back of the mat. And just notice what happens. So did the whole body want to come along for the journey? Try and lock, not lock, but try and focus the hips to face forward and just twist from your mid back. So you may not open as much as you can. You may not go parallel with the wall or with whatever's next to you, but you're just trying to take that twist just from the middle of your back. Looking to the right hand. Take a nice long inhale here. As you exhale, can you twist a little bit more? Keep those hips facing forward. Nice, inhale. Bring it back to center. Let your drishti come up with your hands. As you exhale, let's do the same to the left. So right hand now is chasing to the top of the mat. The left hand is chasing behind you. It'll happen. Look, look at what happened to me. Straight away, my left hip wanted to follow my left hand. So try and keep those hips chasing to the front. Keep your left hand chasing to the back. The action is coming from the mid back. So you're not going to go as deep as usual, but that's fine. We want to work the mid back here. Take an inhale, grow a little bit wider, reach through the fingers as much as you can. Take an exhale. Can you twist any deeper? Nice. Inhale, sweep it up back through the center. Look up, exhale, open it again. So really now work to keep the hips completely parallel to the top of the mat. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, open. Notice if you can feel a bit of something building heat-wise in the shoulders. For me, I definitely can. Inhale, bring it up. And exhale, take it open. Last time, inhale, sweep it up. Really reach, reach, reach. Imagine you could touch whatever's above you and then exhale, left hand to the back, right hand to the front. Make that twist come from your mid back. Beautiful, inhale, reach it all the way up. On your exhale, bend your knees. Let the hands come down through the center line, forward fold, Uttanasana. Let your head go here. Slightly turn your heels out. It's just gonna give your Hips a little bit of a bit more space to play with. Feel the weight transfer from the front to the back of each foot here. Notice where you naturally like to sit. And then inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. So fingertips or sh hands to the sh And then inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. So lifting halfway, really focus on the hip hinge here. So rather than um, this being about rounding and the tailbone comes under, think about hinging from the hips. So these front hip points are trying to meet the um, top of your thighs. Yeah, And then feel if you could spread your sit bones. So feel as if you could just pull back, plug back those um, femurs, the long kind of backbones of your legs. See if you could suction them into your hips to hinge deeper. Come on to the fingertips 
and halfway lift, fingertips to shins or to the mat, either is good for me. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Try to keep that hinge of the hips. The knees can be bent the whole time. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. So really nice long spine. Focus on that hip hinge. And exhale, Uttanasana. Folding down. Beautiful. One more just like that. Inhale, come into your Ardha Uttanasana. Really flick that tailbone, really send the hip points forward and down. And then exhale, Uttanasana, let it go. Take opposite hand to opposite elbow and just start to sway here in a nice ragdoll. Let go of the neck, let go of the head and just sway from side to side. Feel the weight move across right to left, left to right. Nice. From here, keep a soft bend in the knees. Take your hands behind your back and clasp them. So obviously, if you've got like wrist issues such as a cast, like you have a broken wrist, then just do what you can. If you can, clasp the fingers or interlace the fingers, do so. Keep bending the elbows. Deeply bend the knees here. Take an inhale. Take an exhale. On your next inhale, try and keep the palms touching as you straighten through your arms. Take them away from your body. Exhale deeply. Inhale. See if you can keep the palms together and just keep sending your hands as if they're going to go up and over your head and land in front of your toes. I mean, Fair play if they do. <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed. But, you know, it's the action. Yeah, so mine won't be that far over my head, but it's just where you're sending the energy. So just think about that. Nice. Take one more inhale here. And exhale. Deeply bend the knees as you release the hands down. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold. Nice. Deeply bend the knees, root to rise, come all the way up. Urdhva Hastasana, reach the hands over the head. Exhale, hands through the center line, Samasthiti Hi. Great. If you had your block, Grab it. If you don't have a block, this is probably one of the very few occasions where I totally agree with people when they say use a book. Um, we won't go into that, but use a block or a book. Uh, just use something solid that you can stand on. We just want to be able to pop our right foot onto it and then lift our left foot off. So standing with that right foot on the block, try and stand up and out a bit. So really, again, think about lifting the arch of that right foot, just like we did at the beginning. Your hands can do whatever they like, but we're just going to start hinging, uh, or sorry, we're just going to start swinging that left leg in its socket. So this doesn't need to be perfect. This kind of isn't like yoga, where we're looking for some specific cue or specific action. I just really want you to feel like, okay, I'm just kind of oiling up that left leg. So, you know, if you're a bit like me and you can sometimes feel a little, like, little bit like Tin Man, just imagine you're just banging some WD-40 in that hip joint and you're just kind of loosening it up. So each time the leg might go a bit further back and might, and might go a little bit higher, but we're just trying to wake it up a little bit. And then from here, bend the left knee in, stand nice and tall, and then open that left knee out to the left. And notice again, we don't want to take the torso with it. We want to keep the torso facing forward. It is literally just that hip that is opening into that lovely external rotation. Bring it back in, open it up. And it may not go far as you normally would, bring it back in open it up. But you're playing with a lot of variables here. We're balancing on one leg. We've been on it for a while. We're just opening and closing. Opening and closing. Nice. Drop that left foot down. Switch legs. So 
Come to stand on that left foot on top of whatever you're standing on, book, block, whatever you've gone with is cool. I actually think a book would probably be more handy than those soft blocks. Anyone that's been taught by me for a while or been following the channel for a while knows I, I have a little bit of a thing about those soft blocks. I think they kind of have a purpose. But I mean, if that's all you've got, I'd actually recommend getting on a book instead today. Like grab hold of a couple of really thick cookbooks, stand on that. It's just going to feel a bit more a bit more stable. So we're just working through the right hip now. Notice any, in, like any imbalance. So for me, my left hip is just more rangy and, and it's not a rangy hip. I just mean it's got a little bit more naturally to give me without needing any warm up. Um, my right hip, not so much. My right hip's a bit like, yeah, we're, we're stiff over here. So you know, just notice any imbalances that show up for you. I think that's the beauty of the practice is that you tune into, oh, okay, so my left hip's a bit more open than my right. I wonder why that is. Is it because I'm right-handed and I do a lot of work with my right? Or is it because I've got kids and I carry my kid on the right? Or, you know, is it because I always reach for things um, and bend down with the weight in my right leg? I mean, it could be so many things. But sometimes it's nice to ooh, uh, acknowledge the differences and ponder why they're there. Keep going. Maybe the leg is just getting a little bit more momentum and a little bit more height. Notice if you're letting your pelvis do most of the work as I've just realized I am. <laughs> And then drive that left, uh, sorry, that right knee into the chest. Stand tall on that left leg. It's probably talking to you. That's totally cool as well. And then open that right hip out. So you're taking that right knee wide, but you're keeping your torso square and bring it in. Open it out, bring it in. Open it out, bring it in. Open it out, bring it in. Beautiful, drop the right foot. Oof, my, left, my left glutes are um, very much warmed up now. Okay, cool. Now come back to the top of the mat. We'll take a few versions of uh, Surya Namaskar A. So inhale, reach your arms up, look up. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands through the center line, forward fold, Uttanasana. Let the head hang. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Again, all class, focus on that hip hinge. Make that the thing that you're going to be really thinking about as well as lifting the arches of your foot by suction cupping up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise. Come all the way up. The arms will go up but overhead. Exhale, hands through the center line. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Look up. Exhale, bend the knees and fold, Uttanasana. Bend the knees, roll up to stand. Reach the arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands through the center line. Inhale, sweep it up, look up. Exhale, fold. Hip it, hipping from the hinge, no, hinging from the hips. Let your head hang. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, reaching up. Urdhva Hastasana. And exhaling through the center. Beautiful stuff. Inhale, this time deeply bend both knees, sweep the hands along the floor and come into your Utkatasana chair pose. So this is a stable chair here, so we're not having the toes touching for this one. We've got our feet roughly stacked underneath our hips and a deep bend in the knees. Maybe lift the torso up a bit and then sink into it a little bit deeper. Try reaching through the fingers as much as you can. Maybe sink in a little bit deeper. Sending those knees as far forward as you can. Take an inhale here. And exhale. Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. 
on your exhale, softly bend both knees and step your left foot back. So going to be a bit funky without the hands, that's fine. Inhale to a high lunge. Exhale, lower that left knee down. Inhale, take the twist here, so opening up to the right. Again, keep the hips square to the top of your mat, open up through the middle of your back. Reaching back and looking back to that right hand. Inhale, back up to centre. Exhale, take the twist. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, take the twist. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, hands through the center line. Tuck the back toes, come back into a high lunge. Reach the arms up and overhead. Take an inhale here. On the exhale, see if you can lean over that right knee, it's deeply bending, and see if you can just bring your left knee into your chest to drop your left foot next to your right. Coming back into Utkatasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, root to rise all the way up. Exhale, hands through the center line. Inhale, deep bend of both knees. Sweep your hands up and alongside the ears, coming in to Utkatasana. Stable chair here. On the exhale, Fold Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Soft bend in both knees. Weight is going to go into that left foot now. You're going to pick up the right, send it back, and come into a high lunge. Inhale here, and exhale, drop with control that right knee down to the mat, coming into more of a low lunge. Nice. Inhale, reach tall. Exhale, right hand goes to the top of the mat, left hand to the back. Again, the twist is coming from your mid back. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, open. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, open. Hands are reaching apart. You're trying to be wide here. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, open. Inhale, look up, lift up. Exhale, open, keep it coming from the mid back. Inhale, sweep up, look up. Exhale, hands come through, tuck the back toes if they're not, and lift back into that kind of high lunge. Lean over that left knee, uh, left thigh. Think about plugging your left heel down and back that's going to help here. From here, we're going to slowly see if we can drive that right knee in, keeping the left knee bent, and drop the right foot back to where it came from. Deep end of both knees. As you inhale, come back through into chair pose. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, sweeping it up. Look up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, back through the centre line, Samasthiti. Nice. Inhale, deep bend of both knees. Sweep back into Uttanasana, chair pose. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, Urdhva Uttanasana, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Lift up, weight into the right foot, deeply bend the right knee so you can start to take the left foot back. So almost like a really low crouching warrior. Coming in to high lunge. As you exhale, slowly drop that left knee down. Nice. Inhale, reach up. So try and come up and out of dumping in the low back. Exhale, open. Right hand to the back, left hand. Chasing the top of the mat. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, open. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, open. 
Nice. Inhale, sweep it up. Beautiful. On your exhale, hands come through the center line. Reaching up on the inhale, coming back to high lunge. Exhale, open up. Feel the test of the balance here. Inhale, look up. Exhale, open out. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, open out. Nice. Inhale, reach up. On your exhale, lean over that right knee, put the weight into that right heel, drag your left knee into your chest, drop your left foot down. Sweeping it up, inhale into chair pose. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, sweeping all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands back through the center line. Inhale, deeply bend the knees back into chair. Try and tuck your tailbone under and lift your heart. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, start to bend the left knee. Pop the weight into the left foot. Start to take the right leg back. So you're in a really deep crouching warrior, essentially. Drop those right toes back. On your exhale, lower the right knee. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, open from your mid back. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale to open. Inhale, sweep it up, look up. Exhale to open. Inhale, look up, sweep it up. Come back into this high lunge. So lift that right knee. Exhale, open. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, open. Whew, this is challenging for the balance for me. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, open. Inhale, come back through to high lunge, hands through the center, lean over that left leg. Essentially, you wanna come from a crouching warrior to that right knee in the chest, and then drop that right foot down. Beautiful. Inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale, to fold. Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, to fold. Inhale, root to rise, reach it up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, come back down, Samasthiti here. Nice. From here, inhale, reach your arms up. On your exhale, fold down. Beautiful stuff. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. On your exhale, step, hands or no hands, that left foot back. So we're skipping the chair pose on this round. Drop that left knee down. Inhale, rise up. On your exhale, start to work to straighten the front leg. Maybe push that front heel forward. And then again, we're hinging from the hips. So we want the hip point that usually would be kind of facing forward. We want them to now come down so that almost they could touch uh, your right hip could touch the right thigh. Maybe it does, that's great. Now try and plug that right thigh bone back in its socket. Suck it in. Drive down on that right heel and pull back. It's just gonna help wake up everything in the back of that right leg. Keep leaning over. Keep sending the collarbones up and over. So not down and hunched, but long and straight ahead. Nice. From here, make sure your back foot is tucked under. Come back into a low lunge. Nice. Inhale, come back into a high lunge. So lift that left knee off the mat and exhale, find a warrior two. So rearrange the feet. Um, they may not be in the right place for your warrior two. And then deeply bend into that right knee. Think about again, plugging that right femur back into the right hip socket. And then find your Virabhadrasana to warrior two. What can you find in this asana that 
is very familiar. It's like coming home. What can you find that's of some challenge to you? Maybe that focusing on just trying to lift the pubic bone and drop the tailbone whilst pressing into the outer blade of that back foot. Maybe it's about reaching through the fingers as much as you can. Whatever it is, find something and be there. Take an inhale. Exhale, sink a little bit deeper. Inhale. Exhale, straighten that right leg. Turn all 10 toes to the left. Turn the heels out slightly, hands on the hips. Inhale, lift the chest, lift the heart. Exhale. Come into a wide leg forward fold now. So let the head hang heavy. Again, as always, I always say this, if you want to take the forearms down to the mat and that feels good and you're getting a good stretch there, do that. But you can always just keep the hands on the hips and just let everything kind of let gravity take over. So let the head hang, let the chest hang. Again, think about gripping the mat with the fingers so you can lift those inner arches, engage the legs, the inner thighs to lift the kneecaps. We're working so hard today <clears throat> in the legs, as is the nature of hands-free flow, I guess. And then from here, wherever your hands are, I want you to now take them behind the back and clasp them like we did earlier on. So clasp them so that the palms are together. As you inhale, start to straighten your arms and see if you can take them up and as far over head as you can, but keep the palms together. So resist the urge to open the palms. That will take you deeper, but we're seeking a different sort of line of tension here. So keep the palms together. Inhale deeply here. And exhale. Inhale, rise all the way up. The hands are still clasped behind you. So again, if you're wearing a cast, um, because you've got a broken wrist or something, this might be a bit tricky, so just do what you can. And then turn your right heel back to parallel with the mat. So we're setting up here for a humble warrior. So deep end of that front knee, the hands are still clasped behind you, the palms are still seeking each other. Take an inhale, lift the chest, pick up the heart. On the exhale, take the chest on the inside of that right foot, right leg, and keep sending the hands up and over, but keep the palms touching. You won't go as far as you can, that's fine. Take an inhale here, exhale, inhale, exhale. Next inhale, release the hands and let them just come down onto the inside diagonally to that right foot. So you're kind of like off diagonally to the left. Lift up onto the fingertips, inhale, lift, exhale, fold. Notice if you can go deeper now, you don't have the restriction of the hands behind you and the shoulders in that extended place. Inhale, lift, no weight in the fingers here. Exhale, fold. Nice. From here, sweep up into your warrior two. Straighten both legs. Keep the toes pointing exactly as they are. Turn the left heel in. You're going to deeply bend through that left knee, coming down into Skandasana. So you can go lower than me, but we don't want to use the hands here. So just go as low as you can without kind of using the hands to keep you upright. Take an inhale here and then exhale over to the other side. So turn that right heel in a little bit, lift, spike the left heel and then come into Skandasana. On this side, you can have the hands into prayer or you can have them out in front. I tend to have to do something different on each side just because of imbalances I have. Inhale here. And then exhale, slowly come back to a wide leg forward fold. So straighten both legs and fold down. Hands can go wherever they like, just without waiting. Inhale, 
halfway lift. Exhale, turn all 10 toes to face the top of the mat. Find your way back into a high lunge. Beautiful. Inhale, come back to standing at the top of the mat. So left foot meets the right. Beautiful stuff. I'm gonna face this end, although I may regret that because the sun is at this end, but it's just easier for you to see me on this side. Okay, inhale, reach the arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Exhale, bend that left foot, step, bend the left knee, the left foot does not bend, and then slowly take the right toes back, coming in to a high lunge. On your exhale, slowly lower the right knee down. Nice, keep the back toes tucked for this next bit. As you inhale, start to lift up, straighten through that left leg, maybe kick the heel forward. And then as you exhale, come into your Ardha Hanumanasana half split. So again, we're trying to really cinch up the hips a little bit here by not allowing the right hip to spill open, but keep the right hip facing to the top of your mat, plug your left femur, your left thigh bone, suck it back into your left hip joint. You will probably feel a lot more intensity if you do that. Couple that with driving your left heel into the mat and pulling it back. You should, pulling it back, you'll hopefully feel a bit of sensation there on that left leg. Nice. Inhale, rebend that left knee and rise into a high lunge. Ooh, watch the watch the balance. On the exhale, drop your right heel down and find your warrior two on this left side. So, you know, you might have to shuffle the feet like we did on side one. I certainly almost always have to. Reaching the arms out wide, really plug that left thigh bone back into the hip and bend the knee deeply. Same on this side, what can you do to make this interesting? We spend a lot of time in warrior two in yoga. It's a very traditional and much seen asana. But what can you do in this practice, in this present moment today, to make this one a little bit different and a little bit more challenging? So for me, I'm really thinking about trying to lift my inner arches and not dump into my feet. Reach long through both sets of fingers. Take an inhale here. On the exhale, straighten both legs. All 10 toes are gonna turn to the long side of your mat. So this will be all 10 toes to the right. Inhale, hands on the chest, hands on the hips, lift the chest. Exhale, fold over. Same, same, you can allow the forearms to come down. You may need to walk the feet out more to do that, but that is up to you. If you do have the forearms to the floor, or if the forearms don't reach, but it sounds like you'd like to do that, just to have some leverage, you can grab your block and pop your forearms onto the block. Turn your heels out slightly here. And again, think about suction cupping up from the feet. So we want to really kind of drive up from the feet and then lift through your quads, through the thigh muscles, just to lift the kneecap slightly. Let your head just hang. If you have got your hands, uh, sorry, your forearms on the block or on the floor, just, just really, you know, kind of push into them. So you're getting a little bit of a lift here in the shoulder. Nice. From here on your next inhale, halfway lift. And as you exhale, turn your left heel in, foot goes parallel and find your way back into that warrior two position. From here, hands are going to meet behind the, mat, behind the back. So whichever way you clasped them last time, and I didn't cue a particular thumb on top. So the way to know which way you clasp them is, clasp your hands now. So for example, my left thumb always goes over my right. So chances are whatever you just did naturally is what you did on the right side. So this time, change it. 
yeah? So for me, I need my right thumb on top. For you, it might be different, but clasp the hands, switch the clasp. From here, take an inhale, start to straighten the arms behind you, keep the palms touching, and as you exhale, we take the humble warrior and fold down. Again, you know, if you've got, um, like when I had a broken wrist, a nice way to do this to feel, um, feel it in the shoulders is opposite hand to opposite elbow. And if you've got a cast, a plaster cast, that might be a bit more available than trying to mess with your fingers. So there are options here. Keep driving that left knee in to the middle. Notice if it wants to splay out, try and keep it in the middle and keep driving your palms together. Your head is hanging. You're really retracting through your shoulders here. Everything's working, the lower body, the shoulders, the upper body. Take one more inhale here. Exhale, come all the way up. Release the bind. Turn so that you now bring that left, uh, sorry, that right heel, pigeon toes in and bend deeply into that right knee, spiking the left toes, coming in to Skandasana. Come across to the other side, so this time, whoo, this time the left knee will bend and the right foot will be lifted. Nice, then coming back to a wide leg forward fold. Again, your hands or your forearms could come to the block they could come to the mat. Nice, from here, lift halfway, and as you exhale, turn, come into a high lunge. So I always have to scoot my left foot way back over because I've moved it around. Nice, on your inhale, come all the way to stand, right foot back to the top of your mat. Beautiful stuff. I'm gonna come back to where I began. Nice, from here, take the feet as wide as your mat. We'll come down into yogi squat malasana. So if your yogi squat means you need to be up onto the tiptoes, what I want you to do is come down and start to roll your mat back. And that's going to help you to ground the heels. Only because we're gonna be here for a little bit and I, I don't want you to have to be up onto the toes for a long time. So fold the mat over a few times. That's gonna give you the height so that you don't need to spike the heels. So take the knees wide, feet wide, heels turned in. From here, come all the way down into your yogi squat, malasana and rearrange the feet as you need to here. And again, you know, this is like another extreme deep hip hinge. So think about instead of kind of the chest going forward too much, try and think about lifting the chest, but only whilst you've still got that deep hinge. So if you feel that you've started to do this, yeah, and the hinge, the hip bones are starting to point up, that's not where we're wanting it. So start to send the hip bones forward and then lift the chest. So if you need to be kind of a bit more facing down, that's cool. That would be better than the lean back for now because we really want to get into the hips here. Take a couple of breaths. There's such a perception that hands-free classes are like easy. And they're really not, they, they really challenge me. It just, it actually always opens my eyes up to how much I rely on upper body work when I do um, yoga asana. So, you know, if you found this challenging on the legs, then I'm with you, you're not alone. Nice, from here, if you've got a block, I want you to grab it or again, you know, your book or whatever. And I want you to just put it on its medium height and then come to sit on the block. It's just so that we can be here a little bit longer and sit a little bit more upright without it kind of being this massive ask, which, you know, being in Malasana for a minute at a time, for some of us is a big ask. Cool. From here, you're going to sweep your right arm around and your right fingertips will chase the floor. Your left arm is going to sweep up, looking up to that left hand. Try 
to keep that left knee going wide and try and keep the left sit bone grounded to the block. So as soon as I do this, my left sit bone wants to come up with me. So I really have to focus on sending energy into that left sit bone and sending it into my left thigh to keep me open and to kind of keep me honest and not cheat the work. Nice, switch inside. So the left fingertips now will go over and in front, left arm in front of the left thigh, fingertips over to the left, and then reaching up with that right arm, looking up to the right hand. Keep that right knee going out to the right. It's gonna wanna cave in, that's fine, but just keep saying, not right now, not for now. You keep sending it to the right. Switch sides one more time on each. Right arm out in front of the right thigh and reach up. Ground that left sit bone down, send the left knee wide. And then exhale, switch sides. Reach the right arm up and overhead. Right knee out to the side. Nice. Left arm up, switch sides. Beautiful, and then coming back to center. Come off your block and come all the way onto your butt. It might be a bit of a plonk. That's totally cool. <laughs> it really will just depend on, probably on how deep a range of motion you've got in your ankle, to be fair. But if you plonked down, no sweat. Keep your block handy. Um, we're going to use it for a little bit of restoration, restoration at the end. So again, not essential, but if you've got it, use it. From here, roll all the way down, bring your knees into the chest, and then allow your kind of uh, forearms to wrap around your knees so that your knees are gonna go wider than your body, <clears throat> as if your knees are trying to come into your armpit. So again, you know, chances are they're not gonna, but that's where you're sending them you're really deeply hinging here or closing, I should say, the hip joint. You know, the, the hip is really flexed here, knees into the chest. Nice. From here, you're going to send <clears throat> your left leg long and flex the left toes strongly. So pull the left toes back towards the left shin. Then you're going to start to work to straighten the right leg. So don't worry about if it doesn't come super far up and overhead. That's not where we're going with this at all. So what we're going to do is just a little bit of L crunches or L, L lifts. Um, so lift your left foot off the floor and then I want you to use your lower abs to lift your hips off the floor. So try not to use your lower back it's really hard not to because you want the momentum. But essentially, we want to keep the legs in an L and we want to just be lifting from the very bottom of the abs. So, you know, you're going to feel it straight away, I would think. So we'll do this for 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, five, four, three, two, one. Bring the left leg up to meet the right on one. Now, right foot goes down, hovers above the mat. We'll go for 15, 14, 13, 11, uh, sorry, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, bring the right leg up, reset, take the left leg down. We'll go for five, four, three, two, one. Left leg high. If your lower abs are talking to you, they're talking to me too, that's fine. Right leg down, five, four, three, two, one. Right leg up, left leg down. We'll go for one, left leg up, right leg down. We'll go for one. Bring both legs up, bend both knees. Try and lift your shoulders up and off the mat. Send your arms alongside your legs, but beyond. 
And then from here, we're gonna push the feet away as if you were pressing into one of those machines at the gym. So push for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Bring in for five, four, three, two, one. Oh, release. Let the feet go, let the head relax. I'm just gonna switch ends actually because the sun is in my eyes. Whew, let the work go. <laughs> that was not even a lot of core work there at all, but I uh, hate core work as I'm sure most of us do, but we can always probably do with a little bit more of it in our life. Nice, from here, drive that right knee in, send the left leg long. We're gonna take a twist. So actually, if you've got your block, take it over to the left. It's just gonna be something for your right knee to land on. Open your arms up into a T and then let your right knee go all the way over. You might need to put the block on quite a high height. You might need a couple of blocks, but essentially we're looking for the right shoulder blade to be as close to the floor as we can with that right knee seeking the block. And for some people, this is very available. If not, use the props you have, or just don't use props and just let that right knee seek the left side. Allow your shoulders to come heavy onto the mat. Your gaze can just be gently over to the right hand if that's no biggie on your neck. Slowly come back to the center. Take the block onto the right side this time if you want to use it. Drive the left knee into the chest. Take the right leg long. Arms out into a T. I'm going to roll over so that that uh, left knee comes onto the block or seeks the floor. It may even go onto the floor. Um, you know, if you've got a very deep twist, then that's going to be open. That's cool. But just do whatever you need to just to feel like this is a little bit more of a relaxing twist than a challenging one. <clears throat> you can let your gaze go towards your left hand if that feels nice. And just try as you inhale to just gently send the left knee a bit further to the right and gently send that left shoulder a bit deeper into the mat. Nice. Bring that left knee back into the chest. Bring your right knee in to meet it. Give them a wrap around with the arms and give them a squeeze in. Nice. So to finish, we're just going, well, just before finishing really, we're just going to come into kind of like a supported bridge. So have your feet hip distance and knees bent. And then as you lift your hips, just bring your block onto its kind of middle um, side and just pop it under your sacrum. You'll know it's in the right place because you'll be able to lift your legs up and not kind of feel like you're shaking around. So if you take it too high up your back, this is gonna feel pretty funky. So you'll know you've got it in the right place. It's almost like your sacrum just makes a lovely shelf for the block to go under or on top of, I guess. And you can have your arms open here. You could knock the knees in together if it feels nice. You could also let the legs go long. Careful I don't kick Drakey. And just let them kind of fall open. We've done a lot in the lower body. So feel free to just allow, allow yourself to find a little bit of ease here in this really, really gentle heart opener.
once you've been here for a little while, and that is relative to you. Maybe you want to remove the block, or maybe you didn't have the block to begin with. That's fine. And then just come into any Shavasana that's going to feel good for you. So for me, after a hands-free flow, I always like to take Supta Baddha Konasana, which is soles of the feet together and knees wide. Um, it's just because the legs have done so much for me, I quite like to just let them fall open. But you can take whatever is going to serve you. Stay in your Shavasana for as long as, as you have, as much time as you can allow for it. This is where Drake and I will leave you for this practice. As always, it's been an absolute joy to be a little piece of your yoga practice for today. So thank you for allowing us to share that with you. Until we see you again on the channel, Yogi. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you.